Okay, this is the uh, February 12th meeting of the uh, Conway Board of Selectmen, and we will be meeting in a joint meeting with the Finance Committee later on in the meeting. We're being taped by the Frontier Community Access Television uh, Station for viewing uh, later by the public and by residents. First thing on the agenda, minutes for February 5th. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah. We have a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is meetings attended by select board members. So I usually go first. So, uh, so we had a great meeting here with Comcast with maybe 30 Conway residents who came in to talk to them about when they're going to get service and mostly Comcast was interested in knowing who would have a long driveway and to see if Comcast could schedule a date for their construction crew to give them an estimate of what it would cost. And a number of people here did. And, and there were a number of people who had just questions and some of them on the forum, you know, are we really going to get it? You know, and then people still have that concern, and, and it's, they've waited so long that it's hard to believe. But uh, I think everyone left satisfied. So. so it was a positive meeting. It was a great meeting, yeah. And Dana came in, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. That was it. Okay. Okay. Um, I had a. Um, Executive Board meeting of the Franklin County Selectmen's Association uh, a couple of Thursdays ago to go over the programs for the year. We're going to try to make it more interesting so that we get more uh, select board members coming to those meetings. So we're, we're looking for good speakers and good topics for the quarterly meetings. And that's what that was about. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda. We have uh, citizens' concerns. We have any citizens' concerns? Seeing none, we'll go on to the next item. Old bid business, we have annual town meeting warrant. We have a review of that, Tom. Uh, you have the latest version here. Um, still haven't finished the budget, so I haven't even started populating Article 2. Right. But you've seen a lot of those figures. Yep. Uh, I have included now, uh, as Article 7 in this, the uh, police cruiser. Okay. And I will have more to say about all of the ambulance items later. Okay. And I'm not sure whether Gemma's going to be here or not, but uh, okay. I'll go over them when they're on, and she may come over later or not. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I have any other substantial changes? Well, I wanted to mention under Article 18, just again emphasizing that I think it's a good practice if anyone's proposing any kind of a new position, even if it's a very small part-time position, first to have it go by town meeting rather than ha just putting it into people's budgets. Um, it's, it's most important when it involves benefits, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, so I have to uh, go back and look at the budgets for the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission because I think at least one of them included money uh, in, their, in their operating budget for mm -hmm. this. I think it's a good idea to have town meeting vote on it first. Mm -hmm. Okay, I agree with okay. um, Just a, a couple of typos on this. Because of the way that I, I create the things, it, there, it says no recommendation for the Select Board and Finance Committee under Articles 23 and 24, but that's just because I was um, I was moving what was on Article 22 down, right. which is the community right. preservation, so yep. I'm taking those out. Right. Uh, and then I have included um, at the very end, uh, we got another petition about um, how the what the, uh, the highway department should do the uh, landscaping work. We have a landscaping contract, a groundskeeping contract with the company now, which is actually going out of business. Um, but uh, so I have put, uh, as best I could, the uh, language that was on the petition on uh, 
under which is now Article 31. And uh, I have asked, uh, I'll give a little bit more information on it during my update on that. And Ron actually mentioned he was considering taking Oh, he was, he was planning so. to do the cemeteries. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so those, those are the only uh, items for your attention at this point. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, next item is the Energy Committee update on Town Hall Insulation Project. Gentlemen. With a bit of embarrassment, I have to sit in front of you again and tell you, which I, the last time we had the conversation, I thought we were pretty much uh, said and done with this. Um, what we have come up with is a resolution and an offer, counter offer from the contractor to settle the contract. And uh, I should mention the select board does have the uh, savings summary. Oh, good. Design yeah, version I, I, installed I didn't and my copy credit down. Right. for deficient work. Yeah. Um, I guess the best news is that we exceeded our, our goal as far as green energy grant on this building. So we've accomplished mm -hmm. that. And as we looked at that, e we'll even look with the work not being done, it you, you right. Oh, and and what, awesome. what happened is that because of a, a construction detail on the, on the rakes of the second floor, they were not able to install the insulation as it was specified by the engineer, whether by design or by the fact that they just didn't. Um, we haven't really been able to, to discern, but it wasn't done. But when they IR'd the building, we didn't see a big difference in that particular space enough to say, look, we're not paying the contract, you know, do what you want to do. But we discussed this at some length on whether we hold them to the contract and say, look, do it and then you'll get paid or you're not going to get paid. But the last uh, draft we had back between the engineer and him, they got to a compromise number that, that Tom has. Basically and splitting the difference between our offer and his initial offer. Okay, um, and what were those, what were those numbers? Um, our offer was um, 12,000 credit. Uh, 22,000 that we would not pay, and he was saying he could give up 6,000. <coughs> and we've gotten down to. So we're down to 14. That 14, he, the counter years. proposal that he came back with, I thought he was. He had come up and we'd come down. Yes, I think it's more like 12, actually. So yeah. it's a little bit in our favor. Okay, so it's not this 14,360. Um, no, no. This this is a, this is our offer to him. This is yeah. our counter offer to his six thousand dollars. And then he came back and said, "After that, we've got another." And, and I think it's twelve something. I thought it was ten, but you know, I have to look at that number. But all right, so we're, we're basically satisfied with <clears throat> what he's done with our energy savings, yes. and we've worked out the deal. There is okay. a wild card that we we can't uh, assess any real value to because we don't know what it is. The, the building inspector, after approving the project, it came back and has some issues with uh, the cellulose that was installed not being uh, a true vapor barrier. So he's concerned that we may end up with some moisture buildup on the inside roof deck in that space and has asked us to monitor that space for Again, we haven't gotten verbiage from him to say exactly how long and, and what he, he will accept for uh, a monitoring mm -hmm. for us to do. Mm -hmm. Practically, I suspect because of the way this building is built, this is a boarded ceiling or a boarded roof with a slate on top of it. Mm -hmm. It certainly breathes. <coughs> um, suspect whatever moisture might show up there during the wintertime is certainly going to disappear the minute the sun gets hot on that roof. Sure. So I, I don't know that it's practically, it's anything we really have to be concerned with, but is this little wild card out there is if something would show up in there that we've got to address, I don't see anything in what we're settling here that protects us against that. It should happen. Um, it's another one of these, you know, are we looking at, you know, a 75% risk or are we looking at a 1% risk? Mm -hmm. um, my personal uh, 
inclination we, is I don't think it's a big deal. Did we get the design engineer's opinion on that? Same thing. She has come back and said, well, we'll do the monitoring, has done a little bit of work on finding out, you know, what that might expense be. Um, both Bryce and I have looked up equipment, which doesn't look like it's all that big a deal. Mm -hmm. um, was she alarmed by what the building inspector what said? What she was, yes, because this was sort of a, from what I understand, and Bryce might have a better uh, understanding of this, is that between the time we submitted the, the permit for this and it was approved, some information to come back through the trades and stuff that how cellulose performed wasn't exactly how it was being um, advertised. And enough information to come back to say where well, they've seen some issues with this where it, it's dense packed into unvented bays. Um, there's a potential for some moisture buildup. Again, whether we're going to see that or not is, I think, low on the probability level, but it's still, is, it's out there. And the fact that we haven't gotten a, a, a definitive response from the building inspector and say, what is that, what do you want to see, what are you going to accept for monitoring here? Now, the original plan was to just fill the stuff up with dense pack anyway. Right. Yes. So this would have been the case regardless Probably of how, regardless. Of how it, yeah. But the, we can't blame the we contractor. Can't, we can't hold the contractor responsible for the fact that the building inspector changed Middle changed their mind halfway yeah. through this. Is there a different kind of cellulose we should have used? No, it, it's just an assumption how the product was uh, advertised and spec'd out by the industry, and enough of this has gone on long enough to where some instances have shown up to where there's been an issue, um, but. So Again, I think it's not one of these broad paintbrush things. Is the design of this building going to contribute to that, or is it going to pretty much make it a non-issue? And I believe it's, it's going to be a non-issue. I don't see that it's, uh, unless there's something about how that roof is constructed that I'm not aware of. But if it's slate over a plank roof, it it's going to breathe. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. any moisture buildup that we get, <coughs> typically in the winter, is certainly going to be evaporated <coughs> once the spring and summer hits it. Sure. And the fact that the air sealing has been accomplished, the, the amount of warm, moist air from this building that's going to get up into those cavities has certainly been reduced considerably. And we're not using the building like we do. We don't have, you know, nobody's playing volleyball and basketball up there through the week. Nobody's uh, running showers. Up there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're we're not producing a lot of moisture. So, um, I mean, if, if, if I was it was my place and I was paying the bill, I'd probably say, okay, let's, let's settle up and get this, this cleared. But I didn't want to suggest that without letting you know that there is this little uh, wild card out there that, that could come back and, and bother us, but realistically, so, I... Might, might this result in ice damming? I mean, is that, is that the fear? Has it never been no, insulated? what they're enough? worried about is if moisture builds up there and it doesn't evaporate, you start beginning to get mold, or you can get you know, rot on the back, on, on the roof deck, which mm -hmm. uh, would mean at some point, you know, some repairs to deal with that, which would not be an insignificant cost. So, and I think the, the building inspectors are like bankers. They play very, very conservative. They want all the, the I's dotted, the T's crossed, and every information that comes out, they can make an issue of it. Okay, this is what we're going to ask you to do. Um, so that's where we sit. I, I think that we, if, we got. Go ahead. If we monitor and we find there is some moisture, what's what's our strategy? That we haven't gotten the one during the discussion over getting the insulation level up there. Uh, the last thing that we saw on how they would actually accomplish the the intended goal was to take the the rake ceilings down in that space and. Mm -hmm clear out what's there and, and start either with solid foam or putting stuff in there with a with an air break above the, the insulation and the roof deck. Um, but that, again, that would, have, that would have had to have been done even if we'd gone with the original design of just dense pack. The thing, now there's dense pack and fiberglass in there. Mm -hmm. And it would have been all dense pack. Well, basically right. the plan was for them to fill those cavities fully, which would have torn and sort of removed the, uh, or pressed the uh, fiberglass together. So 
Um, most of dense packed cellulose would have been in the cavities, which they're maintaining is, was also going to act as an air barrier. Okay, but that possible condition has nothing to do with our contract, right? Right. Okay. It just has to do with the concerns of the building inspector. Right. Okay. All right. So we're 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 basically to the point on this contract where we're we're settled, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. You said something. Did you just hear somebody say you're still negotiating back and forth with him? Oh no, we 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 got the uh, we. No, they. He told us what he was going to credit us. We sent back, and it was not acceptable. We're not going to accept that. And what was, we countered that. Again? We countered that, and he came back with one that was a little bit less, but had some uh, verbiage that supported his argument. And mm -hmm. after reading that, I said, "Okay." Um, I guess he's also. They've also done a lot more to the rest of the building, and. <clears throat> They've been really good about it, and it's their insulation sub that I think is the one at, at fault. And I think this allows us to um, move forward because we have more we have to do with this building. And I think um, Goss, Goss Construction has been very good at this, and um, I certainly hope that they'll be bidding on the rest of the project. Okay, so you're satisfied with where we are with this, this basic uh, agreement? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're putting in for another green energy? As soon as we clear this, and we probably missed the deadline for this yeah. year, but we're, we we're, need to we'll clear this, get it inspected by the DOER, and then we can we can go to an, an, a new project. Great. Yeah. We we can do smaller projects now. We'll have uh, a little bit left, but uh, uh, and we have to finish all of that. We have to spend all that money before we can right. apply for another right. grant. But there's more yes. money yet. That, out there. Yeah. Yes. We don't get anything until we spend everything they yeah, gave right. us. So. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell them to send the invoice and then that will go on the warrant. Great, right. And uh, so our, our projected savings was 27%, but it's actually now, as installed, 24%, yes. which is above the required 20%. The 20 yes. Okay, so we're in good shape. We, we made our goal. Yeah, yeah. Just that it got to be a okay. little bit of a dance on. And I know you guys work very hard on this, and, and we certainly right. thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. I can feel the difference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Already. <laughs> the, the Energy Committee's been doing a, doing a great job over the last couple of years. Yes. Very good. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Okay, the next item is to review the Open Space Committee appointments. Um, you have some something on that Tom? Yes, there, there are um, two that, that need to be acted on. One of them I think can be acted on very easily now. Um, we can uh, unappoint Melissa Patterson to her current term, if you would be so kind, and then appoint her to a term ending 63020. Um, uh, Andy Levchuk uh, also needs uh, to be reappointed, but to a three-year term starting in July. So I thought we could wait until um, July for that. Okay. Uh, they may not have gotten letters saying they were appointed, but if they um, if they thought they had been appointed, then they should have been come in and gotten sworn in anyway, which neither of them has. So this mm -hmm. is getting straight with all of that. Okay. So essentially tonight we're just going to appoint Melissa Patterson on the recommendation of the Open Space Committee to become a member for a term ending 6-30-20? Yes. They, okay. they would, um, the, the chair wanted both of them to be reappointed, but I had some concerns because it would have been over a three-year appointment, mm -hmm. and that's our standard maximum for, for that. Okay. So on... Um, with the recommendation of the Open Space Committee, uh, I'll make a motion that we appoint Melissa Patterson. Can you uh, actually unappoint her to her current term first? Okay, we're going to request it. We're going to unappoint her <laughs> to, to the term ending to June the 30th. Term ending June 30th of this year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll make that motion. We'll unappoint her. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now I'll make a motion to appoint her starting in July. Uh, starting now, actually. Starting now? Yeah. Okay. Because she's filling a term? 
Yes. Okay. So we'll make a motion that we appoint Melissa uh, Patterson on the recommendation of the Open Space Committee for a term ending 63020. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Now, what do we have related business on that? Is that uh, what no, you that, just? Yeah, that's, okay. that's what I went through. Yeah. Okay. We have um, the ambulance equipment from ambulance stabilization fund next. What are we talking about? And I, I, uh, I wrote up a uh, a piece that gives a lot of figures. Uh, let me actually give a copy of this. Is <coughs> working off of. Um, Different emails, but I'm not sure which one. <laughs> yeah, that's at. that's that. So, a lot of numbers. Yeah. Um, the the upshot is that revenues have been declining for several years, and um, we are not making our target uh, of investing in the ambulance stabilization fund. We didn't last year, and, there, and we're not going to. According to projections, we're not going to be able to this year either. So, uh, in order to make sure that the ambulance has sufficient funds, because revenues have been going down, I'm proposing raising the amount that we provide in Article 2, which will, um, I think, be more than comfortable It'll be more than comfortable for meeting the ambulance department's needs for this coming year and may provide $10,000 or so to put into the ambulance stabilization fund next year. Now that's still much less than the $25,000 which we had been able to put in a couple of years ago uh, and when, I, when I came. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, we may have to look at it again next year uh, but that and all of this means that uh, the requested uh, Lucas CPR unit um, we, we cannot fund that out of ambulance stabilization this year and still uh, it, it, it would take out more than we would ever be able to put in we'll only have about six thousand dollars left mm -hmm. after um, after uh, giving money to their operating budget. So, and some of this is because uh, there was, I think, extra taken out of receipts reserved last year and put into stabilization. Uh, I seem to recall uh, the Finance Committee coming up with that as a, as a, a reasonable objective for, for what we had available then. And that's where we do stand. We, do, we, do we have an explanation as to why our trend in ambulance receipts is going down? And that's why I asked Gemma to come in. It, it, and of course, she uh, the, the trend started before she took over. And I don't know. Um, is I it, don't know anything about it. So Gemma may, might have some. Is it, is it a show. matter that we're not being reimbursed properly for our runs? Is it that the runs are being re reimbursed less? A portion of it is that because the way it works is we're only, if patients have specific insurances like Medicare or Medicaid, we're only allowed to bill at a certain rate mm -hmm. and they only, they're only, we can bill at the, the full amount but they're only obligated to pay back a certain back amount. Mm -hmm. So typically it'll get sent to the patient I believe as, you know, this is your bill, but most of them don't pay it, and we don't really have any backing to go after it. Um, and if they're required, if they need like a paramedic intercept or something, we have a set rate that we pay, like you know Northampton Ambulance or Medcare um, for that intercept. And typically, most of the time, the amount that we get from Medicare is little to no more than what we have to pay for the intercept. So unless we're not losing money on that team, are we? Not as far as the actual billing amount, but as far as like our what we get paid as EMTs or you know for the fuel or any of that other stuff, that's not getting that's typically not covered. The town's um, share of the profit isn't there when that's said. Right. 
Um, and I think that might be part of that trend of the lower amounts is that we have an aging population. A lot of the patients that we take are not, you know, they don't have insurances that pay the full amount. How are the other towns dealing with that? You know, have you talked to other towns? I don't know. They must be in the same boat. The, the, I think this so. Is, this is a universal problem throughout the Commonwealth. Yeah. And there, there may be some legislation, um, they're considering some legislation to fix this problem. Because this is not just us, this is happening Maybe all right. over. Okay. I, didn't, I hadn't realized that it was such a drastic drop mm -hmm. until Tom actually lined up the numbers. I wasn't aware that it was that big a, a change. And it's not um, just this but, year. It's, it's been no, down it's been, it's been every, happening steadily. In, yes. Uh, Try talking to our billing company and see if there's anything we can do. But if legally we're only allowed to bill for a certain amount, then there's not much we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about the um, the Lucas uh, CPR unit? Uh, I I will note that uh, we are already slated to spend enough out of capital stabilization so that if we added that to the capital stabilization draw it would go over the amount that we're putting in this year. So uh, I, from where I said, it would have to be a raise and appropriate. What, or, what or do we have raised. in the capital state realization now? Dollar uh, Somewhere around, I think it's 280,000. I don't have the figures right here. It's not a lot because, you know, we, we did draw on some for the fire truck. Mm -hmm. So we haven't, we haven't paid that back yet. Um, but even if we did purchase the Lucas and fund all those other articles, what would you estimate we'd have to take extra out of, out of it? Yeah, it, we're, we're now slated to spend uh, 115000 and we're going to put in 125000 That's the But that doesn't standard. include the Lucas. Does For that both. include the Lucas? That no. does not, no. So that would be $7,000 so over. 22000 what we're putting into it. You'd have to dip into about 22,000 in the crop. We, 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 would, uh, we would be over by 12,000. Uh, no, I'm sorry, we'd be over by 7,000. Mm -hmm. And how much do we have in the ambulance stabilization? About 150,000. So we, we could take some of it out of that. And uh, we could, the-, the Split it. Um, it is possible to do that. You could take the whole amount of the amortization stabilization plan. It's an item that, that has not been on the capital stabilization plan. So it, it's not part of the uh, calculations that uh, the committee has that show year by year how much comes in, how much goes out, how much we're left with. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's always possible to do that. Uh, but I, again, I am, uh, you'll hear later that I believe it's going to be necessary to put more than 125000 into capital stabilization in here, too. Okay. Um, okay, I, I, I've heard this is a very um, important unit. I've talked to other people and they have nothing but positive things to say about it. And certainly I think we should have one. Uh, because we all know how strenuous it is um, to do CPR and we do have limited personnel resources here in our emergency management um, uh, areas so I think we need to, to fund this one way or the other okay. you know this is this is a 10-year according to Gemma's uh, request this has a 10-year life so we're talking about Seventeen hundred dollars a year over the life of this. If we fund this at seventeen thousand, um, I, I think, I think that's a, a tremendously good investment, okay. considering that, uh, you know, we could we could save save lives, yeah. okay, with that. So, let's figure out a way to get this funded. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll make a proposal. And okay. You can see how you like it. I, I like I like Bob's idea of splitting it. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 never keen on on drawing down what we don't pay back, but uh, I'll see what the numbers look like. I still don't have a complete budget, of course, mm -hmm. not having the, yeah. the school uh, numbers yet. But uh, 
Yeah, I'm going to have to have one in a couple of weeks. So. <laughs> we need to make that work. <laughs> how would you estimate how 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 long would you make this work? Make it okay. work. All right. Anything else on ambulance? Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, we have a 10-year employee recognition for, no, no, is it 10? It's 10. 10. It's 10. Oh, I thought it was, ten. sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Miss, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's 10. Ten. 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 10. 10. Cool. This this was this error on the, uh, <laughs> sorry. so this is for Adam Baker for 10 years on the highway department. Uh, I'll make a motion that we sign this letter of uh, recognition for Adam. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I know why you didn't say. No, nah, sorry. I'd rather have you do it. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda is uh, a joint meeting with uh, our finance committee at 6.30. Mm -hmm. And where is our finance here committee? This week than there were last week. Okay. Where is our finance committee? Just go take a look. No, thank okay. you. Uh, but we do need Dana, of course. Thank you, Jim. You're Thank you. Just, Gemma, would you just have Tom come in? We'll we'll, we'll get to uh, the finance stuff when they come in. Okay. Tom. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> We've been in a lot lately. Uh, the board of health is ready to talk to us. The boy lives right up the road anyway. He's yeah. Okay, out. great. I, I, I know, I mean, uh, boy lives a ways away. They all live a ways away. They do. They all live in the outskirts of the county. No. Uh, I don't think it's one of those. Alan was right up by Roy. Alan was by Roy. Yeah. One's down who is it? One's way out, shoveled. I'll give this job past yeah. you. Who's the fifth one that we don't know to see? Oh, Bob Stone, right? I don't know him. He's on Rose's head. <coughs> okay, thanks. Bye. All right, Tom, we'll just go on to your update. Yeah, it, it'll be it'll be a minute, but we'll still we'll be here. Uh, and the pa I think papers were laid out there for the finance committee. Okay. Um, I think we need another chair is what we need. Uh, if you could. So the finance committee should be there. Um, well, they'll have to pull up a chair. Sure. There's room there for them. They can make some. Did we there. not have? Papers there for. They, on no, the there table. was nothing here. Oh, there's only four sets. You can stay there. Oh, no. There were four Don't sets there yeah. for the finance people. Okay. And then there's okay. extra ones. I wonder if you have a little bell. Okay. Yeah, you're great. Right. 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 Done out. We'll be flexible. Here's, here's my update. Let me shake through this. Uh, for my update, while we're getting settled. Um, for our town meeting and budget. Uh, to clarify an item from last week, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the treasurer did get a community contact IT grant for software conversion. I think, Bob, you were especially uh, asking about that. As uh, I was through the community software con consortium, Conway is in the community town, though, so we should be eligible to apply for a grant this year. Uh, the planning board is uh, hearing on marijuana is Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, there's more there. It's also up on the website. So Wednesday or Thursday? 
Uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's Thursday. How did I put in Wednesday? Thank you very much. Uh, that is Thursday. Tom, well, you mentioned marijuana. Weren't you and I at the uh, marijuana meeting last week? That's, oh, good. wasn't that last week? I'm, I'm getting there. Okay, good. I just we didn't talk about meetings there. of last week. Um, and uh, for departments, based on the board so to include items over 5,000 capital planning, I've asked Ron to come up with a list of all the equipment over $5,000 that should be added to the replacement schedule in the capital plan. As scheduled capital expenses should be paid for out of the capital stabilization fund, it will be important to have a realistic annual funding level for that. I believe it will be substantially more than $125,000 per year as in either building items, including HVAC roofs, et cetera, transfer station items, two compressors, or bridges are currently considered in the $125,000 annual investment plan. Uh, FYI, as I mentioned before, this year's capital request total $115,000. Uh, as Bob mentioned, I commented to the Cannabis Control Commission last week, including both the boards and my own comments, and also filed them electronically as requested by the Commission. If anyone is interested, I have a copy of the FERCOG's comments, which are mostly requests for clarification. I understand from our accountant that he has posted the funds received from the UCC, discharging their lien to the Community Preservation Account. As requested, I contacted two additional audit firms. I received one additional quote, which was the same for the first year, but higher for 2020 and 2022. I'm still waiting for the third quote. Mm -hmm. That's my right. Right. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Our finance committee is here. All right. Okay, so we'll go into our joint meeting. Uh, first item on the um, review of the proposed Fiscal 2019 budget is the Board of Health. Hey, Carl. Hey, Jenny. Hey. How are you guys doing? So, uh, everything the same as what you heard from Jenny before. You, you, you gave this budget before, right? The general budget? Oh, no, you haven't. This is the first time. I'm sorry. I don't have the actual budget. Uh, but we do have all of the notes on it for here, which is all the changes. Mm -hmm. So unless you, if something's not on here, it's the same as it was last time. Okay. Carl, do you want to take it away? Sure. Um, there's a, a bit of a lift in the budget for uh, 2019. Uh, we're looking to include probably a $10,000 overage from what we had last year. Uh, problem number of things have come up lately. I mean, we, we were, you know, in the budget process, but we're, we go into it with very little data. Uh, but we heard uh, back in January that um, one of the uh, haulers, the uh, people who do the, um, uh, the ch our trash pickup, normally got um, dumped in the Chicopee landfill, which they're closing down. And now the, now the same Carter is going to have to take it to some Coventa incinerator somewhere um, to, to pull the trash. What's that? I think it's in Connecticut or New Jersey or something. Oh, right. who knows? But the um, they're going to uh, increase our tipping costs by nine dollars um, a, a ton. So, based on just how much we've used this year, um, or in our projected uh, tonnage for this year, which Ginny keeps it fabulous handle on um, we we're looking at a we're looking at a five thousand um, dollar uplifting cost for just for just for trash that's, that's I, I'd like to add there that that's not in the budget that we turned in because right. we submitted the budget before we found out about this mm -hmm. yeah this is all stuff that's happened since since we, we had the budget back in December so, so that I'm going to go up nine thousand. It'll go up 5,000. Five It'll go from 45,000 to 50,000. Okay. Is that item a bid item? Yes, it is. The, how, how, but how but the Franklin County, Franklin County Solid Waste how long Management. Contract I think it's there. I think she was going to renegotiate in the spring, but. She's going to do one year contracts. She's going to do normally, one year contracts. Normally yeah. three year contracts. And she said she was going to do one year contracts this year until we find right. out, to find out where, where everything's going. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Good idea. Thank you. Yeah, because because you know in, in the world of strange trash. How are you going to let him haul it? What's that? I was just saying, Devin and Bob. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know. Different contracts, I suppose, could haul to different places depending on where they have their contracts through. But right. I mean, this place is closed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sure. There's probably going to be more and more of that down there, too. Yeah, yeah complete, complete waste down in Westfield has been bought out by, um, by another company, too. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what's going to happen to our bulky waste mm -hmm. and, and whatnot else. Um, so, that, that, so we've kind of put a, a small $2,000 uplift into bulky waste hauling, just because we don't know what this new company is going to do. Um, that's in there. That's in, mm -hmm. that's in the right. budget. Also, yeah. And is that Mr. Anything else? Um, the reason the um, Board of Health dues is up oh, that's right. um, was because last year we didn't get the increase in the nursing program, and when we got our first bill, we were extremely surprised to see what it was. Apparently, it got as far as the Finance Committee and the upper levels, but it never filtered down to us, so it never appeared in our budget. So this year, we've had to cover for that amount plus this year's. And I think that came out about to be almost $3,000 total. Mm -hmm. Above what it was last year. Above what it was yeah. last year. So we're seeing increases in a number of different places, and uh, it's, it's kind of all rolling up to you know, giving us a budget now that's a little bit, um, quite a bit higher than, than what we had originally proposed. All right, so so bottom line, the increase with these additional changes is what, about 10000 About 10000 yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, and Tom, Tom has that information, or will have that information soon? Yeah, it's all in this handout. Everybody should have this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you also have, since Dane is here, and I just mentioned a couple of compactors that aren't in the in the capital plan. Could you mention what's going on with the compactors? Um, the trash compactors is is seeing its age. It's over ten years old. We usually only get ten years out of a compactor, but waste management has been unbelievably good about repairing the trash compactor since well, I'd say about a year ago. Uh, we've lost motors, we've lost pumps, shoes, the sliding, the shoes that the ramp slides on, all kinds of stuff. And they come up here and fix it, and we don't get a bill. Or we haven't had one yet. Or we haven't had one yet, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, oh. so they're taking care of it, and, and you know, our, our, one of our latest crises was the, you know, the hydraulic fluid tank was, was half full of water, and they were running, wondering why it was running crazy. They drained the water out, they put hydraulic, you know, fresh hydraulic fluid in there, and the thing runs fine. Yeah, and our paper compactor is is not new, but it's in very good shape. So we've started a program between myself and the transfer station attendants to keep a closer eye on maintenance for these items. I mean, they grease it regularly, but a little bit more needs to be done. Mm -hmm. What's your estimate on how long you think realistically they they last before they should be replaced? Ten years. I think you can get twenty out. To tell you the truth. And you're but at twenty five now. Is that what you're... No. No, no we're, we're. We were basing. I, I was basing the ten years on the fact that the first one that we had had to be replaced in ten years, mm -hmm. and this one we've already had twelve years. This will be thir year thirteen. This year thirteen. It. Yeah. And. and you know, we seem to be able to keep it running because we can, you know, waste management does all this, does I, this work for us. I think we have it on people on our transfer station attendants uh, that are, you know, kind of keeping up with doing the lubrication and so forth. And with the first compactor, there was nobody there that was knowledgeable in doing that. Maybe waste so, management thinks they own it. Could, could be. <laughs> They're taking care of it. That's all I know. Like well, I said, well, we haven't seen a bill yet. Certainly on these on these capital items, coordinate with, with Dana, yeah. the Capital sure. Improvements Planning Committee, so yeah, we, can, we can get them in there. Can, mm -hmm. yeah. can I ask a question? Sure. I, I'm confused. So are, the, are these, it says equipment needs. Mm -hmm. So you said that they're good. But, but yeah. You're, but you're requesting new equipment. Not yet. Okay, no. so this is no. just to sort of let us know, yeah. let us this is a, put just it a, in a, a schedule, a, yeah, or is that it? Compactor number one, 
is, is long gone. It's gone, yeah. Right, okay. And, and, but and we're, so we we're got on. two in the paper. This was just a history lesson, so you would know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, we're not. We're not requesting any equipment. Well, okay. So. Okay. So maybe. Uh, the equipment committee, which I remember, mm -hmm. should have this stuff already, or you don't. Uh, I don't know whether you do or not. Okay. Dana, you, do you know? You might want to take just I'm take sorry, this with do you. We have the the uh, compact, the trash compactor, and the paper compactor. We don't have anything. Right? I don't know anything about it. Okay. Okay. So and Carl needs to coordinate with Dana. So you guys are going to have to come up with some sort of cost estimate. Oh yeah. No, we'll get a quote from the flyer. So and get it in the schedule. Yep. Oh, the prices on all the old ones are there, so you can see what they've done. I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah. The other thing, Triple. the other thing is that um, I still think that we should be looking at the, poss the um, possibility of opening up that center island um, at the transfer station for composting and other recycling projects because we've got too much stuff on the cap already. And. What, we what? turned in we turned in a capital request what three years ago four years, years ago years. with bids and we were told that it was too high and that we should coordinate with the uh, uh, highway department and see if we could get them to work on it and that's still in the works that's still in the works they don't have the equipment the equipment they needed um, <clears throat> they didn't get last year so. We're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Basically, you need to get a logger to take the trees out. Is that right? Right. The insured logger, yes. Mm -hmm. a, a, a logger to come and take we, the trees. We've had out. loggers. We've had loggers knocking on the door. You know, wanting to take the, the you know, take is, the trees out, but they're not. They don't have insurance. And the concern is also that we've got electric wires running through there. We've got mm -hmm. the buildings. And they consider talking by. to us, people like Panama or somebody that we had do work for us in town. You've got a ledge right in there, so it's not flat land. Recently. Yeah, Pander Mill. Pander Mill, yeah. Well, wasn't that the original problem was that there's a lot of ledge under It's all ledge. The whole, um, Ronnie and I went in there one time with the, with the mini excavator. Got, got down about a foot in uh -huh. rock. And, and that, that's, that's the whole problem place. is that yeah. we've got ledge in there. But that's we can clear the so trees expensive. off. We could clear the trees off. You'd still have a bit of a flat spot up there to put mm -hmm. a couple of sheds. Mm -hmm. Get some of the stuff off the cap. Okay. Uh, are we going to revisit with um, Ron how, yes. to, how we might do that? Yeah. Okay. But Ron and I have talked about it, you know, about some kind of combined thing between you know what we could raise in finance, and he's got the, the manpower, and we were, we were we were talking about it, and then we got the tornado, mm -hmm. and, okay. and Ronnie's been behind the eight ball all winter, so I haven't even thought to mention it to him. Okay. But but it's it's in the works to it. Maybe we can get another tornado to go right through. Where but it went close. It's close. We ordered no it there and it didn't. It, <laughs> it went up the road okay. a quarter mile. All right. So, so Carl, you're going to give uh, Tom updates uh, to your budget then for, for yes. next time. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions from for, uh, Carl? Okay. Thank you, Carl. You're welcome. Okay, Capital Improvements Planning Committee Report. Recommended some items. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So Tom, you sent us a new uh, capital project request form in the mail that we didn't get in our handout here. Just um, that's what I thought Dana was doing. 
was the look of it. It was for the Lucas equipment. But I don't know. Oh, so, so, I don't even yeah, know yeah. anything about that. Bob. Yeah, or, uh, right. Capital request form for the Lucas the ambulance. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was just bought up to us last week? Yeah. Yeah, last week. Thank you. Uh, I mean, we, we didn't know anything about it at the time we had the last meeting. We had a meeting on the 21st. Mm -hmm. um, I, I concur with John. I think, you know, it's certainly a piece of equipment that we have, should have. Um, I'm really concerned about the fact that our revenues have gone down, and it's why they're going down. I mean, is it a case of where we just send somebody a bill, they don't pay it, and it's like, oh well? <laughs> um, I can't imagine that the number of ambulance calls has gone down. No, it hasn't. I'm sure they've gone up. Yeah, Tom, Tom is going to get together with Gemma yeah. and try to figure out. Yeah, why, so why that trend is because that's, well, that's what Gemma just said was that it appeared that Medicare pays a lot less than the actual cost. Mm -hmm. And well, but we there's some people to bill for the rest wrong when we're paying other services roughly what we're getting or less, you right. know. Uh, for, for and, and I, I mean, I can't really talk about it because I don't know about it, but <laughs> just common sense tells me that. You know, if, if I pick up Roy and I take him over to you and I get paid three hundred dollars for it, you send me a bill for four hundred, there's a problem. But this is Dana, this is the healthcare system. Yeah. Pardon? This is the way the healthcare system yeah. works. So they they will take those un, uh, uncovered bills and they'll go out to a collection agency basically. What else are they gonna do with them? Insurance used to pay the cost of the ambulance. But I, now, I just now think it's too convenient for Bob to bill me four hundred dollars. No, tip, really, there's nothing you can do. The, the fee that the ambulance gets, it's set. It's set by by Medicare. It's set by state for Medicaid. Well, who sets who sets the bill that he charges me? You can charge whatever you want, but no. But I'm saying when when. XYZ ambulance charges Conway. Mm -hmm. Right. Who controls that bill? The, right the now, rate. the state sets a rate. As John was mentioning rate. earlier, there is proposed legislation that would allow yeah, towns but, you know, to set the rate. It's not the time to get into that, I guess. But, no. uh, basically, uh, I, I, it would be good to confirm. Uh, I think I've mentioned it to the board already, but there were four items that did come through your committee that did get recommended. Um, as yep. I recall being at that at that meeting, there was the the forty eight thousand for the police cruiser, mm -hmm. um, the uh, thirty five thousand for replacing the two thousand thirteen Volvo excavator, the twenty thousand for a hydraulic boom list for the highway department, which was a vote of four to one, and so all the others were five to zero in favor. That was four to one, and then um, twelve thousand for replacing the two thousand twelve Kubota tractor and snowblower. That that's that's really the I think the report that uh, is from your committee. Okay. And so now we've added one more to it for the Lucas. Uh, except right, that the uh, it, that yeah, um, I'm going to try to make that work between okay. uh, funds, and we'll see what we can um, do. Do you anticipate any more requests? I mean, we're way past the deadline. Uh, no, I didn't anticipate that last one. Yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't anticipate the police cruiser either. How would the, how, well. I, I, the, the four highway items came in uh, before the deadline. Yeah, they were the only people to send any requests in. Mm -hmm. uh, What's the Volvo about here? Pardon? The Volvo. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't hear The you. Volvo tractor. What's the Volvo going on with the excavator the Volvo? What about oh. it? <clears throat> well, it's not that old. Okay. And thirty-five thousand. I, I I don't think a couple of years ago you were, we got two. It's a ninety thousand dollar to replace it. Uh, the replacement unit is ninety thousand dollars. Yeah. What also, what, what, happened happened? what the plan apparently is from the highway mm -hmm. department 
that by replacing this operational equipment more frequently in the long run, it's going to cost less money. Right. right. Now that only applies to this kind of equipment, not necessarily municipal certain trucks. Certain kinds of trucks. equipment. Right. Some kinds of old equipment, ones. Heavy, such as plow heavy, trucks, heavy that equipment. are highly specialized. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't right. work I, with I them. Understand now. We understand. It doesn't work with them. So it's an, it's it's more of a a, a planned turnover in equipment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. More newer equipment, less maintenance. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, there's been a lot of maintenance in Volvo. That's that's the thing. No, the only the only is it real maintenance on issue it? has been that it uh, it blew a hydraulic hose, and that ain't nice, which was a nightmare to replace. Huh? How come? Well, because it's everything is where it was internal, mm -hmm. and everything has to come off to get to it. This is the mini excavator, not one of the bucket loaders. Mm. Yeah. There's, this there's, is the mini excavator that he bought to replace the cap backhoe you have. Uh, Apparently, there's good trading for it. Yeah, I mean, that was the same. Uh, the same <coughs> applies to the Kubota tractor and snowblower. The snowblower that he wants to replace is a little wider than the one that they have now, uh, and that has to do with the width of the sidewalks. Track you want? Do you want the track to be bigger? Too? I'm sorry. Do you want the track to be a little bit bigger size than the yes. track? It's going from about 25 horsepower to a 34, I think, if I remember correctly. This past May, I went to a training at the uh, town of Amherst Town Hall, facilitated both the Mass Municipal Association. The gentleman who was facilitating it is the administrator for the town of Northborough, and it was for the purpose of developing a capital plan. So I make copies of the handout. This is for you, Dan. But I can also for you, Tom. I make copies for the select board. But it has recommended reports. Every single new piece of equipment. First of all, there's a rationale for replacing the equipment. Pictures, a standard questionnaire policy, and then for newly acquired pieces of equipment, it's set up on a schedule. So going forward, we don't have to have kind of hither and yon conversations. Or what about this? What about that? So we don't rack our brains. So I mean, it's here. Look at the copies. Thank you. It just makes for an easier town meeting yes. because when everything is set up on a program, we don't have requests sprung that become potentially contentious conversation pieces at town meetings. We oftentimes just want to do with philosophical issues and the, the rationale for the piece of sure. equipment. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, Alan. Welcome. Um, all right, so we'll go on to general. Yeah. Right, Tom, what do we have on the general? Uh, I think we have just one more item, uh, and that is. Um, a, uh, a finance committee member who, who will step away from his finance committee role <laughs> and, uh, talk about IT. and talk about IT because no, it's far. Oh, I'm going to go. Are you done with me? Yes. yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Dan. 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 Thank I don't know where you are. You can find me a replacement for the finance. Three head. Roy, you have no issues. You have to recuse yourself. <laughs> Go ahead, Roy. What do we got? Uh, now, okay. Uh, Tom, do you want to go through this since you and I can answer questions? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Because there was a reclassification that occurred, and um, it may be confusing at places. Meaning, um, for example, we had some in. Let's see, we're in. Yes. Yeah, you're working off the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So, Rory, in general, what we've done is we've looked at big changes. Well, yeah. you're not looking at bit what I what I. Look, but I would say the money that, that is paid to me for my professional services are in two categories. One is in professional technical expenses and the other uh, is in maintenance. Okay, so the other categories are basically uh, service categories where uh, we, the, this includes licensing, 
for Office 365. Uh, and I might mention that we, the town has, okay, so we'll, let's talk about the increase there from, uh, what is it? Uh, 450 to 525 a month. 450 to 525 a month. Um, that is an anticipated increase based on, uh, right now we have uh, some licenses, not all that many really, are at the high end of Office 365, which is in the order of $22 a month or $21 a month. <clears throat> and that's their E3 uh, product, which is, um, um, it's basically top of the line for, uh, for an entity our size. Uh, our main concern with Office 365 was an email platform that would be rock solid, uh, stable, and long duration. And Microsoft has marketed their exchange, as they call it exchange, they have marketed it to be that. Uh, so with that knowledge, we, exchange comes in many flavors. And so we have been, um, we have been licensing exchange based on what we thought, what, in other words, it's, it's just enough to give people what they need. Now, uh, I do want to add that, uh, and so we have, so I said at the top end is uh, the E3 product, 22, 21 dollars, escapes me at the moment. At the bottom end is the kiosk product, which is like $2.50 a month. And, and then there are several that are in between. My suspicion uh, is, and I have, Microsoft is a little elusive on this, but we have a town policy. It's, it's as if you had paper where emails are not to be destroyed, basically. They can be moved around from folder to folder. They can be put even in a deleted folder, but they need to be around should a legal process occur where we can get at these emails. And so I've always had this concern, but you could never get correct answers from Microsoft because they've been developing this product. This is a work in, pro in progress for them, but you get better retention and discovery as you move up the scale, as one would expect. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to see, you know, we want to know that nothing is disturbed in these mailboxes for seven years. Mm -hmm. And so here's what I will tell you. At the bottom end, if somebody deletes an email after, I think it's 120 days, it might be 90 days, it is not recoverable at this moment in time. At the higher end, it is. And so my goal would be to get as much of that as possible within and get it to the people who are most likely to sort of have a need for that. Um, although you, it's, it's impossible for me to say, which email boxes are, uh, you, you could say which ones are used more frequently than others, but you know from a legal point of view, I don't think you ever can tell where it, the problem will bite you. It could bite you in Parks and Rec, it could bite you in Conservation Commission, it can bite you from the select board. And so it's very hard to say. And if I had my druthers, I'd have all of these mailboxes at the sort of 10 or $12 level uh, if possible. I will also add that the, co the monthly cost in this stuff does include the latest and greatest versions of all the office suite. So individuals uh, have access to this should they, should they want it. Some people are very happy with their, the older versions and they really don't want it. And that was not compelling us, for example, to get them a higher level mailbox. <coughs> So, because the, it, it was the focus on the email, basically. Mm -hmm. So, if, let me, let, let's, uh, let's the continue. The internet. What's that? The, uh, the yes. internet is another. Yes. Thing. So, this is, this is actually a, um, a proposed doubling of internet speeds. Right now, MBI is providing the town with a large, and I put it in quotes, five megabits per second up and five megabits per second down. That is inadequate for these two offices anyway, in my humble opinion. It's particularly that office. However, the way the thing is provisioned, and I, we can't, I originally asked them 
uh, Axio and Crocker, well, can we cut back like at the fireman's auxiliary and get more over at the town office? No. It's oh, got to be okay. done equally across the board. So we're kind of stuck with that. What did you have from Comcast when we used to have Comcast? What did we have from yeah. Comcast? B. It must be, I have no idea. I know what I currently have from Comcast, and it's a lot more, a lot more than, that. than yeah. that. Yes, but I didn't know Comcast five, even offers that. Five, 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 five megabits. It's, 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 it's nothing. Right. It's nothing. <laughs> right. it, it's, it's, well, well, the argument was at the time, this is fiber. So we are guaranteeing you five. It's not like when, you know, when over here they're with massively the, downloading things, it's going to affect across the street. With, with, it, with fiber, they should be able to give us a hundred. No, they can give us whatever we <laughs> want, but it's, they can yeah. give us whatever we want, yeah. but it's not cheap. Yeah. So what's the new, the new so quote? The, again, how much? Well, this the, the new again, and and I'm sorry to tell you because I've had some personal issues I've been dealing with. Um, I have I do not have firm quotes. So for purposes of this budget, we doubled it, and I think it will more or less double the bandwidth. Mm. But I hope to get verification this, this, uh, this week on it. Okay. And um, so that's where that increase is coming from. Do we get a competing bid from Comcast? I mean... <laughs> well, there's the philosophical thing. You have MBI. I mean, <laughs> are we going to tell MBI to... You know, to leave the bill. The, uh, well, MBI's at the school, right? I mean, yeah. and it's part. Is it's yeah. unclear to that's me if different. it's part of. It's different. Yeah, we different. don't see the MBI bill for the school. Well, well through the school. No, but, but here. No. Okay. So we're really talking about one, two, three sites. See that? I thought that it's seventy per site. Oh. Four times seventy is two eighty, and that's. What our bill's been. The third is the fireman's building? Yeah. And then I thought the fourth was the school. However, um, like I say, I'll have more this week. The numbers might okay. go up, they might go down a little. Maybe I'll be surprised. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. But the need is clearly there. I can tell you this mm -hmm. that there are times I that agree. users complain that the internet is slow and. Um, and that's that's what it is. Yeah, with, with fiber coming in, we should we should have no problem with speed at all. Well, I would agree with you more. <laughs> Many towns have complained of what the MBI is charging for yeah. service. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Roy. Any any other questions for Roy? Okay. Thanks. Tom, we have anything else on the Uh no. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, Appreciate you nice. coming in. Sure. Sue, how you doing? How you doing? I'm I'm feeling rather exposed. Where's the rest of my committee? <laughs> oh, they're all done and gone. Really? So the board of health? Board of health? No, no. no energy. Energy. Energy, well, energy came oh, and went. Yeah, oh, energy's been here. Yeah. Energy was here Sorry. at six o'clock. They abandoned you. It's okay. It's all right. They did a good job, though. <laughs> we didn't drill a hole. Good. <laughs> good. Except, yeah. except the vent guy. Yeah. yeah. They're not here in yeah. one piece, so they're, they're good. What? They're not here in one piece, so it's yeah. all right. Oh, yeah, well, they're. <laughs> we had a tough decision to make, and we did your imprimatur. So. Tom, do we have any items on anticipated 48 hours in advance? No. no. Do we have any concerns of the select group? No. Open with action. Okay. John, do you all start at 6? 6 o'clock. Oh, no. Yes. Yep. That is a change, but it's been 6 or 8, oh, maybe a year. Oh, that's so. 6 or 8 months ago, but maybe longer. We used to be at 7. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, there, there, there was some mail. Uh, where's the, uh, the box? It's nothing very exciting. Uh, it's actually all pretty unexciting. So there's the FERCOT budget in there. That's, fine. That's the most exciting. FERCOT budget, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm 
Okay, we got a letter from um, the Department of Ag Agricultural Resources about the, um, the apiary program. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll... Uh, Be friendly to bees. We'll, yeah, we'll uh, look at this a little deeper and, and talk about it next week. We've got the budget from uh, FERCOG, uh, which I'm familiar with because I voted on it a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> That go up, down, what did they return? Uh, the statutory and regional assessments went down. Um, our programs went up. And it, so it's a, it, the net is up of less than $100. Oh, good. That's good. Great, actually. And we have a letter from Comcast uh, from Eileen Leahy. She was here at the meeting. And she was here, so she probably talked about all these things. Okay. Okay. Okay, any announcements? No. No? Okay. Then our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, February 20th, because next Monday is President's Day. Three-day weekend this weekend. Oh. Well, yeah. Tuesday meeting, okay. The one? Tuesday meeting. Tuesday at 6 o'clock here in the town hall. Do you have any other budget to hear for? Uh, no, this is the meeting where I hope both the Select Board and Finance Committee make their recommendations. Great. Mm -hmm. If you have any further questions from any department, please let me know so I can be sure that they're here to answer them. Okay. Okay. If there's no more business to come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.